Welcome back to the Papa Me channel. How you doing? How you doing? Come on in and sit on down. Today we're going to be talking about something extremely familiar to us all. You see, I was driving through town today and I saw almost like the Parthenon, an ancient relic of the past, left behind by man only to be observed by passing passengers people in cars that drive by. I drove by a McDonald's that was out of business and I saw the play place, just an abandoned play place. And I thought to myself, my God, I haven't thought of the play place in forever. And it led me to think about the entire history of the play place. So today we're gonna be going over the rise and fall of the McDonald's play place, or pretty much just like the playgrounds in fast food places. It's just weird. But without further ado, let's get started. Today's video is sponsored by World of Tanks Blitz. World of Tanks Blitz is an exciting, legendary, free-to-play MMO with over 450 tanks at your disposal. And it's fully cross-platform, available on mobile, Mac, PC, Steam, and Nintendo Switch. Oh 14 tanks on a map all trying to destroy each other is so goofy and so much fun. And there's just something about having historical tanks mixed with fantasy-based ones and special abilities keeps me coming back. With over 150 million downloads, 8 game modes, and over 32 maps, there's plenty to conquer. Tanks! Tanks! And right now, the game has an exclusive event going on in collaboration with the upcoming movie, Dune Part 2! Timothy Chalamet! Yep. Tanks! From now until March 7th, players will be able to get exclusive in-game content inspired by the movie, including the formidable ground tank when they play in the event. And all you have to do is look out for the secret clue I've hidden in this video, and guess whose side I've chosen? Harkonnen or Freeman? It's gonna be... The guy, uh, yes. <laughs> to enter the giveaway, comment your World of Tank Blitz ID down below with your guess. Winners will be selected from the people that guess correctly. But that's not all. Viewers also have a chance to win tickets to Dune 2. All you have to do is guess whose side I have chosen. Use the link or scan the QR code to download World of Tanks Blitz and get in the action. I'll see you there. Don't forget to also choose a side in the comments for your chance to win tickets to Dune 2. Thank you so much to World of Tanks Blitz for sponsoring this video. Now back to the video. Which let me tell you now, the new McDonald's are just ugly as shit. They're all these weird modern designs. They kind of look like all those new modern apartments too. It's like the minimalist kind of like really simple geometric. I don't, it's just too plain and ugly. Back in the day, it was a spectacle to be had. Red's roof and you know, it grabbed your eye. Even driving up, you got to see the Ronald McDonald bench, which you know, I went down to Dallas, Texas and I picked up my very own and got it. All of these things have collected in these pools of memories from when I was a kid. I mean, even going into the play place myself and playing in there, was a bit of a war zone itself, but you know, the little Game Boy kiosk they had in there too. It was an exciting time to go into McDonald's and be fat as a child. It was a good time. But where did it all start? Where did it all begin? Well, let's find out. To really get into the psyche of the McDonald's play place, I think that we should look at a brief, extremely brief history of playgrounds in America. The play place is essentially just a covered indoor version of the playground, which there were some McDonald's and other fast food restaurants that had outdoor playgrounds, but that's not what the, f well, I'm not fucking talking about that. I'm talking about the play place, which is inside. Wait, it's the play place started outside. Which the, okay, well, the play place started outside. I'm talking about, I'm, I want to know where we get to inside, is what I want to know. Fuck! Which the first design of a playground was originally from Germany in 1848, and their purpose was to teach kids how to play safely and fairly with one another. Which is just kind of funny, because I feel like, in a weird way, they would have weird bullying simulations, and, you know, they would be like, I, I, What do you do whenever you get bullied at the playground? What do you do? And they're like, I don't know, walk away? They're like, No, you kick him, and you beat him up because they're different. But it wasn't until 1887, when the first ever American playground opened at the Golden Gate Park in San Francisco. I wonder what I wonder why it took so long. Wait, 1887 feels so fucking long. Even 1848. It's weird that people weren't just like, what if we just put stuff out in the center of like a neighborhood and they just like ran on it. I do like how playgrounds did eventually evolve into malls and it's like giant knocked over cups and like giant slices of pizza. Take me back, dude. Take me fucking back. Then in the 1960s, the playground began to enter mass production. And this led McDonald's to make a financially risky move by introducing play places of their own in order to entice more children to eat at their stores. Which is funny because it's supposed to entice children, but really McDonald's did something very, very smart. They thought to themselves, all right, we're already getting these little fuckers fat. They're very, very fat. But all the time they don't spend at this place is less cheeseburgers being served. They were pretty much trying to entice people the same way that Apple has enticed new 
new mothers just to throw iPads in front of their children. They were looking for a place to be like, just throw your kids here. We'll distract them. And yeah, sure, you can buy a cheeseburger and a milkshake while you're here. All right, it's not a big deal, but seriously, come here and stay. We have a clown and hamburgers and a fucking gerbil tube system for your for your son. I like to think that the guy who made the McDonald's play place, he had a gerbil at home and he's just like, why can't I break it in the industry? He like looks over and he's like, what do you think, Fester? And he's like looking at the tubes and he's like, my God, if we just made these bigger, children could crawl through these just like you, Fester. You never know. Which that introduces us to Playland. <laughs> A great picture. They seriously have some of the best fucking mascots. That old Hamburglar looks fucked, but dude, Mayor McCheese and the Sheriff, come on, man. So good. Also, Ronald looks absolutely fucked. My God. In 1972, McDonald's tested their play place, aka Playland, at the Illinois State Fair. It was an outdoor playground that was centered around what they called McDonald's Land, which is just kind of, that's kind of creepy. Come on in. It's like giant gates. Only kids. Come on in. A fast food themed world that was populated by Ronald and his pals. Which these first original play places were pretty fucking crazy. I mean, all of the structures were made of metal. I mean, it was all outdoor metal sculptures that consisted of these, you know, Mayor McCheese, the sheriff that was a burger. We actually got to see some of them. When I went to go pick up my bench, we got to see some of them. A guy had a huge lot. I mean, this fucking extremely dystopian cryptid hamburger swing set. I mean, it shook me to my fucking core. And the guy could not have been more proud of this collection. It was awesome. But these collections collections of metal playground attractions. I mean, they would just bake in the sun. They were extremely claustrophobic. I mean, you get bumped around in them, your fucking head breaks open, you're getting sunburns left and right. It was, in the better sense, they were fucking like little torture camps to be completely fair. I bet you they were fun back in 1972. Don't get me wrong. I bet you it was fucking, I bet you it was fun, but I think they did a little better in the future. Rather than engage in any safety testing, they stated they figured that in five days at the state fair, it would receive roughly three years worth of use. 350,000 kids played on the equipment here, and they declared it passed. So off this little 300, which also 350,000 kids at the Illinois State Fair. Man, back in the day, people just had nothing to do. And people just had fucking nothing to do. They're just like, well, I could read this book again, or I could, I guess we could just go to the State Fair and look at some pigs. Before that, people were just reading Catcher in the Rye, Swiss Family Robinson. Fucking boring, man. Shortly afterwards, the first official Playland was launched in Chula Vista, California. It featured the Hamburglar, which was a 10 foot tall swing. The one that we saw was, it had to have been taller than 10 feet. Was it, or was that the one? I think Let me it was see. The ones, the oh, it is. Look at that. That thing is so sick. 10 feet tall, and you would swing off his arms. I'm telling you, when I saw the rusted version in person, it looked like a fucking Tim Burton set piece. It was crazy. Officer Big Mac was a hollowed out metal jungle gym. Looks like the most claustrophobic, nightmarish thing to be in. I was claustrophobic. I was a fat, claustrophobic kid, and pumping kids full of cheeseburgers and fucking milkshakes, getting them all bloated and putting them in basically like a pig pen. Oh, God. And then lastly, the Grimace was a child sized cage. <laughs> Wait, they had two cages? Grimace back then. I like that he was the enemy. But yeah, it was like, uh, it was just a little cage that you could run through. It wasn't as claustrophobic as the Big Mac Sheriff, but still, I mean, my God. And like I said, we got to go and see a bunch of these throughout the year. Like the guy that we went and so got the bench from, he had a collection from the 70s all the way to like present day. And it was pretty unbelievable. I mean, it was just like, it's odd thinking that these things actually had children that like, pe like kids actually wanted to climb inside of these like metal contraptions. I mean, I was looking at them like almost like the Iron Maiden torture devices or the Brazen Bowl. I mean, it, it had that kind of feel to it. It was really fucking weird. The Playland was such a massive success that in the months that followed after introducing the Play Place, the Chula Vista location saw its business increase by 60%. I'm going to preface this now. This is an old 1970s just commercial for the Playland. And the cutting and editing of the segment is so uncomfortable. And you'll hear the guy choke several times. Like they, they didn't edit it out or be like, hey, can you re-say that? They were just like, fuck it. He's, he's eating. Just keep it rolling for the love of god just keep it rolling you know sometimes dear i think you like this place as much as the kids do well it does bring back memories of the candy shop the ice cream <laughs> we're like does bring back the idea of the candy shop <laughs> <laughs> like he's just like shoving a fucking burger in his mouth i think you like this playland as much as the kids do he's like well i certainly do you see, it brings back the idea of the candy shop or the... <laughs> <laughs> Ray's, uh, zoom out a little bit. I hate how his face is like halfway out and he's just like, he keeps like dipping down and eh. There's really only one thing missing. Really? What's that? <laughs> why is it, why is that it's the longest take? 
He's choking, dude. <laughs> he is choking. Being able to run and play. That's what being a kid is really all about. I got to keep showing this fucking, like, <laughs> this, like, dunce kid who's just like... What the hell is he even looking up at? Is this supposed to be the Playland? I think he's hearing voices. Yeah, he's hearing he's hearing voices from McDonald's fucking demons and ghouls and goblins. Just keep eating, Georgie. Just keep eating. Georgie, up here, look. It's me, Colonel Milkshake. You should ask your mom and dad to buy you five milkshakes. <laughs> it's just so uncomfortable. There's nothing's ha- it's just so silent. Where is he going? I know that they're leading him to the Playland thing. This is supposed to be him being inquisitive, but they're just like, don't even care. This child gets up and walks away and he, they're just like, all right, well, he's gone now. It was, it was nice raising him. But when he went to McDonaldland, he actually moved out of our house and he's no longer lives with us. So I would fucking kill for one of those original McDonaldland signs, dude. They even had a yellow brick road that he's skipping down. Holy fuck. And there's legitimate gates. Holy shit. Welcome Eric to McDonaldland. Dude. That fucking Ronald McDonald statue is so tight. It's so creepy. Is that you, Ronald Young? Of course it's me. And all of your other friends, too. C come on in and sit look around. Down. This is so scary. Is that really you, Ronald McDonald? Of course it's me. I've always been here, George. Don't you know that? You have, Ronald? Yeah, George. I'm always here for you. Ronald's always here for you. It's so interesting to think about what's what was cute back then. These statues, I would fucking kill for an Officer Big Mac statue. Mayor McCheese has to be one of the best designs, which actually coincidentally too, all of these designs where people are like, what, that's that design rules, why do they get rid of that? They never paid the designer. Oh. Did you know that? Yeah. All these cool designs, like they only had rights to Ronald the Hamburglar and Grimace. So Mayor McCheese and the other guy, the company designed all of the characters, but like once again, Roy Kroc or whoever the fuck it was at the time just didn't pay him. So they're like, okay, well you can't use these anymore. So that's why they stopped using them. Oh my God, Nick, the filet of fish thing. We have that outside too. All right, that's tight. Anyways, creepy stuff. Other McDonald's franchises soon followed and the rise of the Playland began. Not to mention all the copycats that try to follow McDonald's success. I mean, as soon as like that really took off, that's when he started other companies like Burger King Kingdom popped up. Even Chick-fil-A had one, Wendy's. Taco Bell has a play area in Sandusky, Ohio. And some Sonic drive throughs even still today have some playgrounds, but I don't know if they necessarily had a play place since they were already open. But every big chain basically saw like, holy fuck, this is actually catching on and everybody started just copycatting and doing their own iteration iterations of it own iterations of it did i say especially if i've said especially it's especially all right i'm sorry i see people get upset about that i'm sorry i apologize i want you to know i'm just kind of fucking dumb all right. Around this time too, a lot of parents saw this as the safe choice when taking their kids places to play and stuff. You know, with the rampant rise of kids being reported missing on the news and the increased awareness of stranger danger, parents became less likely to let their children play in an open field or park. In an open field. Did you just pull off the side of the road and just like, there's cows over there, go touch them. The Playland provided a good alternative where the price of admission was a burger and the parents could watch their kids play with other children from a safe distance. I like how you put that in there. From a safe distance. We're not up close with them, it's just whatever. But how safe were these Playlands to be precise? Which in the 80s and 90s, McDonald's Playland equipment was issued to over 3,000 restaurant locations, which made McDonald's the largest playground operator in America. McDonald's always does this shit. They're the, I'm pretty sure they are the largest real estate company in the world. It's kind of funny that they're also the largest playground operator too. It's just, I don't know. With the increase of locations, the injuries began to increase as well. Reportedly, over 1,500 injuries were claimed by 1991. So a lot of these injuries, the most common being small cuts and bruises, romping around too much, rolling around, fucking punching the Ronald statue, probably. I don't know what the fuck they were doing, but they're romping around, tussling around the asphalt, eating cheeseburgers and living life. Of course, you're gonna get some cuts and bruises. But they also had children breaking nose when they ran into the fry trees. <laughs> they were bumping their heads on the rocky hamburger ride and breaking teeth from falling off the apple pie stools which in the grand scheme of these things it all sounds pretty awesome but i could see how that would make people be like hey don't fucking go there because your kid's gonna just like nose dive into these fucking fry trees and it probably just started to cause a little bit of panic and quote all of the equipment on mcdonald's land's premise was never tested for safety nor were the playgrounds ever inspected for safety as well in 1986 in rialto california a four-year-old child went down a hot metal slide and burned the skin off their hands Holy shit, that's fucking crazy. His sister soon followed
followed. Why would you follow that? His sister soon followed and had a large pink burn on her bare calf. The kid's probably like, <laughs> like screaming, and then the sister's just like, I don't care. Wee! <laughs> like all the fucking muscle her calf is just melting off like butter. The two children sustained second degree burns and were sent to urgent care. McDonald's was cited for failing to report the incidents. Lawsuits claimed that McDonald's was at fault. And McDonald's blames the franchise owners for not performing maintenance. You need to stop the sun from shining. <laughs> It's a metal slide. I mean, that's just what we were issued. You need to stop the sun from shining. You're a McDonald's man now, not a goddamn subway fiend. No maintenance manuals were ever created for the equipment to perform the appropriate maintenance. No engineers tested this equipment or held to any sort of safety testing. The equipment was manufactured at the time by JBI Incorporated of Long Beach, who was sued 21 times for one... One piece? Who was sued 21 times for one piece of equipment alone. The tug and turn merry-go-round. What a name, dude. The tug and turn merry-go-round. I like how they're just like, after the second time you get sued for it, you think you'd be like, hey guys, we should probably take it off. They're just like, it's fine, God. Imagine getting that letter. We're being sued again. You mean the tug and turn merry-go-round pops? Yep. It's our crown jewel though. It's what we're known for. Which this was the most dangerous ride. The equipment had a safety device that was not installed on over 800 tug and turns. In 1988 in Bakersfield, California, six-year-old Marlene climbed onto the new McDonald's playground in Delano to spin with a friend, catching her shoelace in a loose bolt. It tore her shoe apart and broke her leg in two places. In 1990, the family of Marlene sued McDonald's corpse on the grounds they've known about the defects on this equipment since 1982 and had done nothing to correct it. Marlene and her family sued the old fucking cheeseburger kings for $10 million in damages, and 120 claims in total were accredited to this piece of equipment alone. Here's a list of examples. Some severed fingers, dislocated elbow, broken bones, child concussions, which, let me tell you, child concussions? What usually happens with child concussions leads to serial killers. Oh, really? That's true. John Wayne Gacy, Jeffrey Dahmer, all those guys. Maybe not Jeffrey Dahmer. I'm speaking out of hand a little bit, but childhood concussions do damage your growing brain. All in all, $190,000 in damages was paid out. So they didn't even get $10 million in damages? I don't fucking know. Who cares? Other lawsuits include $36,000 to the family of a girl whose neck was injured when she was struck by a falling playland tree. $9,300 to a girl who suffered skull fractures in a fall. $1,700 to a family of a boy who fell from a hamburger toy and broke his arm. Luckily, there was no deaths in the McDonald's playland, but there was a death at Burger King. You know, BK was like, are you fucking kidding me, dude, really? We're always coming in second, dude. God damn. A four-year-old boy who was playing in a net enclosed play structure in a St. Louis, Missouri Burger King restaurant on April 29th, 2001. Well, that is a fucking crazy sentence. That's my birthday. Oh, my God. <laughs> First off, this would happen in St. Louis. That is the worst city in America. I fucking hate St. Louis. A four-year-old boy gained access to an area of the enclosed playground not intended for play, became entrapped between parts of the structure, and died. Wait, so how, I'm, I'm picturing that in my head. The boy gained access to an area of the enclosed playground not intended for play. They'll usually have like, let's say there's like a spot to the side or underneath something sure. where you're not supposed to get in there. Yeah. I think that's what it is. He like got in. So he got into basically a playground thing, which became entrapped between two parts of a structure and died. That's actually insane. You know what's kind of fucked up? Is it's kind of like that movie 127 Hours, except it's Burger King structures. That's horrible. And I'm actually very, this is, it would be devastating, but that's fucking insane. Saying, especially being stuck between like a fucking slide and like a Burger King statue or something. Brutal way to go. And in 1988, JBI and McDonald's decided to discontinue the tug and turn and all the other Playland equipment because of the rising legal costs associated with the injury claims. It only took 21 times, over 20 times for them to just say, I think we're done. Let's retire the tug and turn. How did we make it to 1988 before people were just like, hey, can we not put our kids on the fucking tug and turn? You're like, no, it's a fun ride. Yeah, but that it's the tug and turn. Hello? During this time, the Playland was still drawing a lot of business for the restaurants, but change happened had to come, and McDonald's decided to get rid of the dangerous metal and bring playgrounds inside. Ooh. I think you know where we're going, baby. That brought us to the play place. Let's say it loud and proud, dude, the play place. Now the weather wouldn't affect you anymore. It could be rain or shine. Now you could play inside in air condition. We're really making sure people become as soft and as pale and mushy as possible. And you know, we're, we, we got to treat our little boys, baby boys and baby girls right. So the play place was to seem like a good thing, but there was an outdoor to indoor transition. And until the eighties, almost all play parks were outside. The hard and unyielding equipment was susceptible to burning people in the sun, much like the hands and calves of those two poor children. And even now you bring up the old play places. The first thing that comes to mind is the burning heat of the metal. And there's just a couple of uh, people here. Like nine years ago, a guy said the Telecaster Bader. 
He said, in Texas, that thing was a metal level of death. You couldn't even climb up the metal ladder without searing the grease-covered fingers. And Jedi Smog replied, It was in Indiana, too. So hot. But I climbed the shit out of that milk blue flood run. And the big scary smoke monster said, I grew up in Vegas. Those would just be actually on fire. People are so fucking dumb on the internet. Areas with colder weather made the playgrounds useless six months of the year. So now you had areas that were either too hot, some people couldn't even fucking go out half the year. It just became, it, it didn't make sense. And sharp edges and rust made the areas practically hard to navigate. Kids are fucking running around, slicing their fucking legs open. Then you have to go get a tetanus shot, it becomes a whole ordeal. Especially because you know the fucking, you know the McDonald's managers are gonna go out there and like inspect the slides or who gives a shit? It's 1988, are you fucking kidding me? Metallica's on top of the world, Guns N' Roses is doing cocaine, I mean, Hair metal is just about to die, but goddamn if, it, if, the, if the world is an A-OK. -okay. Impending legislature over the safety concerns hastened the progressive phasing out of the outdoor parks. God, I would kill for this McDonald Land playground regulation sign, dude. Officer Big Mac rules so hard. That design is so fucking good, it's unbelievable. Which, unfortunately, in 1999, the Big Mac Climber Jungle Gym marked the fall of the McDonald's Playland. More than 400 children were hurt on the particular piece of equipment. And from 1986 to 1991, more than 1,500 claims were filed against McDonald's for their Playland injuries alone. This is out of 3,000 Playlands nationwide, and half of all Playlands had a legal claim. That's actually fucking insane. Over 50% of all of the Playlands had some kind of legal issue against them. I wonder how normal that is. With something as big as McDonald's and as the amount of people coming in, it must be kind of normal, right? But still, it's like a staggering statistic. Like, if you heard that? If that was on the news and you were like, oh, I take my kid there all the time, and it's like, yeah, 50% of people have had claims against all of them, you'd probably be like, oh, shit. Fuck, maybe I shouldn't be taking them there. Of those, 100 suffered broken bones, concussions, or fractured skulls. McDonald's failed to report the injuries in any meaningful capacity, and they were fined $4 million. Which is nothing, dude. Their fucking science is billions served every day. Holy shit. At this time, this was one of the largest fines ever given by the CP the CPSC, the Consumer Product Safety Commission. McDonald's argued that between 1986 and 1990, there was only one accident per year at each Playland nationwide. And McDonald's tried to shift blame for equipment onto the franchise owners. That's so fucked. Franchise owners are like, <laughs> I'm doing what they're asking me to do. What the fuck am I supposed to do? They, they purposefully told me not to inspect the rust on the slides. What am I supposed to do? They're just like, just shut your mouth and keep, you know. It's like uh, Ray Liotta in Goodfellas at the beginning when he doesn't rat. And then he comes out of the court and, and all they're like, oh, you, you busted your cherry. And they all start clapping. That's all the franchise owners to the fucking CEOs of uh, McDonald's. As stated above, there was no maintenance instructions or manuals to go with these things. I mean, they're slides or whatever. What kind of fucking maintenance? It doesn't matter. Gaps in the bars of the Big Mac climber were large enough for kids to fall through and angled such that children could get stuck in or fall catching a limb i'm can, stuck dude can you crawl all the way up help me please <laughs> dude if i wasn't so fat i'd try to get up there too yeah this is scary like that's what i'm saying it's claustrophobic in there right little kids are supposed to climb. yeah they're supposed to get up in there so they'd crawl through and then they'd fall out and their fucking foot would catch they'd break their leg kids are just so fucking stupid in general that it's just like it has to be absolutely fail safe or these kids are just gonna be like, oh I don't, i'm just gonna crawl through you know hey it's, it's six feet up in the air maybe you shouldn't i'm just gonna it's big i'm gonna crawl through it we're gonna be fine and yeah they just shatter their entire body despite the reports for injuries for this particular equipment, the last of the Big Mac climbers were not removed until 1997, when the CPSC mandated that they be removed due to them not adhering to the new safety standards. When removed, they began a transition to softer, padded plastic playgrounds. As time went on, the main issue of play places became hygiene and bacteria instead of physical danger. People became a little smarter. They're just like, you know, we have these gerbil tubes full of sick children smearing shit. I mean, here's a, here's a crazy thing. My mom, I think I got to go to play place a couple times times because my mom was just like I don't give a shit and she's a horrible parent <laughs> I'm not gonna make that joke out there she's been on this channel but I went to a play place a couple times but I remember one time that pertains to the hygiene and bacteria issue we're dealing with here which I was in a play place I was in one of the tubes at the very top a kid took off his diaper and smeared shit all over the inside of the play place tubes and even pissed all over the floor and these two fat kids were hogging the tube and it was just like absolute pandemonium in this tube as people were just like let me out let me out because they couldn't get down to the slides or that weird fucking like seat belt torture device that you had to like go down. Remember those things? It was like a grid system of seat belts that you had to like fall through. It's fucking horrible. And I was just sitting there looking at my mom like I was in DOS boot, just like screaming out like. <laughs> 
And after that, I was like, I think I don't want to go there anymore. I don't want to go to the play place. Or if I did go there, I didn't go into the tube system. It was That was shell shock for me. I couldn't do it. The real reason why you cannot bring food onto McDonald's play area is because if they allow food in the area, it becomes a food area. It must adhere to certain sanitation standards. AKA, they just don't want to have to deal with another step of sanitizing things and making it just a little bit better for people to be at. They're just like, if they brought a food in there, it's against the rules. Hey. Not my fault. And let me tell you, children are fucking absolutely disgusting. That is just, I mean, it's if you have kids or you know anybody who has kids, you can see it with your eyes. I mean, they just like, it, it's... I like Fortnite! I like Fortnite! God, I hate kids. Excited children are running around after eating. What happens there? You puke. They throw up everywhere. Children have worse control of their bowels. Way too many stories of kids shitting themselves or taking off their diapers after doing so. I mean, my story. There's gonna be so many comments on this video of people being like, I was the kid who shit in the play place tubes. And kids don't understand to just like keep things to themselves. If a kid has to piss in a play place, they're gonna take a piss, they're gonna spit, they're gonna fucking like blow a fucking booger. They have no idea and they just sit there and they do that thing that kids do I absolutely hate. They have like snot running down their face and they're just like, they do the lost toddler look. Looks like one of the 1970s Romero, like Dawn of the Dead zombies, just like. Especially, you know what I hate too? Looking at kids in like fast food restaurants. You ever just be like walking by, you have like your tray of food, whatever, and you're like walking to your table, and you see a kid, and he just has like a little fucking paper slouch of small fries from McDonald's, and they grab shit like this. They have to like contort it and put it in their mouth. It almost feels like they're auditioning for some kind of Frankenstein or chimp role. I mean, it's, they're just like... And the entire time, too, there's just this fucking disastrous Midwestern woman who's just like, He's so cute! God, look at him! He's getting so big! And she's just gulfing down a fucking giant-ass thing of Coke and a Big Mac. Ugh. Well, here's some more stories. I found an old diaper full of poop in the middle of the tubes. I was eight and didn't realize until years later that what it actually was. I have no idea if a kid, or quote-unquote toddler, took it off or what happened. And someone else said, Someone took a dump at the bottom of a slide and my little sister slid right into it. Oh, God. That's just, that's downright unfortunate. My mom blew up at the manager and we got a huge stack of McDonald's coupons. I thought it was a fair deal. That's crazy that the guy paid off the mom with fucking coupons. Isn't that weird? Miss, please, we know you're going to be back. You're here every Tuesday. We know you order by heart. Just take some coupons. She's like, I will. Takes them. The biggest infestation of disease and chaos in these play places were the ball pits. If you were in the 90s, you were a kid in the 90s, this is what the, this is when that play place took shape and form. This was peak era play place because of the merger with Discovery Park. It was a land with tunnels of tubes and a maze, twisting slides, and a ball pit in some cases had multiple games. Padded metal bars zip tied with netting formed cages to house and guide kids around without letting them access dangerous areas. And there comes in the devious man, Edward McMahon. Millen, the inventor of the ball pit. He gained the idea from staring at a jar of pickled onions. What a fucking psychopath, dude. You can tell he was like in like a psychiatric home. He was just like... Does that thing, like pulls up a chair next to him. They're just like, you have any ideas today, son? He's like... <laughs> <laughs> Hundreds of kids play in these pits, but the question of sanitation has always been an issue. The kids playing in these often have bathroom accidents. There are no national standards to how ball pits are to be maintained or cleaned. That is actually fucked. So if somebody took a shit or piss in there, no one ever, I mean like, who actually went in there and cleaned every ball? Think about that. I remember putting like those balls in my mouth. Uh oh, what did I say? Didn't get past me. Don't comment below. <laughs> Dirt, vomit, feces, and urine are common containments found in them. Bacterial contaminants that cause disease were common. I mean, urinary tract infections, pneumonia, meningitis, septicemia, a blood infection, endocarditis, infection of the fucking heart. Children were getting infection of the heart because of the shit, dirt, piss, ball pits, man. And there is more bacteria on a single ball in a pit than one on a public toilet seat. I'm gonna say that again. There was more bacteria found on one ball pit ball than on the average public toilet seat. My God, we failed them. I was failed. We failed as a society. There was also a lot of stories about finding teens, going in after hours, having sex in the ball pits. And also, I remember I worked at McDonald's when I was like 14, 14 or 15. It was like right when they were transitioning from the old look to the modern look. And I thought that the renovation was for a play place. My manager at the time was like, oh no, we're not doing that. He's like, I told him no, because he used to find like old syringes. He used to work in like a, not a suburban, more city-like one. And he used to find homeless people going there, shoot up, and they leave the syringes in the fucking 
ball pits. Syringes are fun. And due to the nature of the ball pits, things can fall to the bottom. Loose change, video games, watches, broken glass, food, and like I said, needles, which is there's rumors to believe that that was one of the big contributing factors to why the ball pits just stopped being because it was just a matter of like too much hidden shit, too many things that could actually kill a child from infection. So there's speculation there, but nothing proven. In addition to there not being sanitation standards for ball pits, there's likely no way to fully clean them. Machines have been developed, but they do not address storage space for moving the balls completely out and washing the bottom. So I think some places had some of these machines, but I just, I feel like it's one of those things too, where it's like you're relying on like teenagers and people that work at McDonald's. They're not going to give a fuck. They're just, I mean, they're, they're not going, they're like, oh, I'm not going to go in there. Who gives a shit? So why would they care? Who is supposed to clean these fucking places, right? It goes without saying that the crawling tunnels of a play place maze are difficult to clean owing to the fact that they are child sized. Physically, this task seems impossible. Kids are coming in and out until closing time and teenagers working there already have enough to deal with. Which that's the thing. I mean, like, if you think about that even, what grown person is going in? Because all of those, I'm pretty sure all of the tubes and stuff, they're like bolted shut. It's not like they're, oh, you go in and like you lift a latch and you open it up and you can clean it. No, it's just like you would have to have somebody extremely small, but even it's like somebody 5'2" probably still be too big to be in those tubes. Probably way too big. You probably have to be in like four foot area to comfortably move around and stuff. And let alone there, it's just like, there's just no way you could ask that of somebody. So these things were just, I don't even know how you would, uh, would go up there and do that. That's a fucking crazy mystery. Besides the ball pits and sanitary things, another thing that led to the downfall of the play place in general, McDonald's was marketed towards millennials and Gen X's children, and they have remained mostly brand loyal. Understandably, those two generations don't play in playgrounds anymore because we're all old. We're old babies. I'm a boomer. I'm 46, but my kids, they played there. And I mean, like they're old now. I have a kid in college. Parents don't want their kids using the areas and safety is a major concern. I mean, even with like the rise of the internet, I'm, I mean, people are just talking to each other about stuff. Everybody's just much more aware of shit now. Back in the day, my mom used to like, if you just did not say something, no one researched anything or actively looked for something. So if it didn't just fall right into your lap, no one gave a shit. But with the rise of the internet and stuff, it's just easy to just stumble upon things or even have things get way more traction than they used to. So a lot of these sanitary conditions safety concerns about being able to see your kid and not have them get fucking abducted by some crazy son of a bitch or even want to just make sure your kid doesn't get any broken limbs while you're just trying to go out and have a simple lunch. It's just the stack became too high. Now, instead of boosting profits, you know, at one point seeing 60% more traffic, now these play places were even cutting some of the profit, which I'm wondering if that's just because seeing the play places and how out of date they are, I wonder if it makes the restaurant feel old and it's not as appealing anymore. Shit, it's like whenever you see a nice car next to an old car, obviously you're gonna be like, oh, the nice car. Also, a huge downfall to this was delivery apps. People don't really go into the stores as much anymore. drive through windows. People don't want to have to actually go inside places. Even, and now even with like Uber Eats, DoorDash, people are just ordering shit and having it delivered. So now your kids are even more disassociated with the actual physical business of it. And the final nail in the coffin, during COVID-19, most of the remaining play areas were shut down. But a decade before the pandemic's forced closure, the designs were slowly being phased out of renovations. Now that play places are closed, many have wondered if it is even worth it to reopen. Open. The benefits of cleaning and maintaining a playground in today's health conscious age are rarely worth the cost. Thus, the death of the play place. We're getting to a period, especially with commercial properties like McDonald's or even some stores, like different kinds of stores that are outdated. They feel like these crazy relics from the past and it feels with how fast technology is moving, everything, time feels so much shorter now. So seeing things that feel so outdated, it does feel like these kind of obelisks, like these old, almost temples to these old gods. And the play place was just once a place that was just so exciting. And to see it now, it's just, it feels so blatantly obvious how fucking weird and and unhygienic and dangerous it is. But in my mind, honestly, there's part of me that would still go back and play. I did see a kid smear shit all over the walls, but if I didn't see that, I could see myself being really stoked or being with a buddy and going there or jamming out on like a GameCube console, little kiosk thing they had. It's just something where it was like, you didn't have anything else really to do as a kid. The technology wasn't there and there wasn't, you know, tons of accessible video games or iPads or anything like that. And it was just another fun thing to do. And that's like something oddly that I, I feel like I miss in a weird weird way and like a weird deep-rooted nostalgia feeling of being able to go into a place and feel like oh this is gonna be fun even if it is like weird corporate manipulation to get you to stay and spend money it's kind of cool and also it comes from a pretty fucking like crazy time when they're just like fuck it ball pit and there was no real thought process of to like the dangers of things it was just cool so fuck it it got made in a weird way i kind of wish we still had some of that but it's probably for the best that we don't <laughs> so thank you so much for watching today and if you do see one of these play places give a nice proud salute to our fallen soldiers. Take care, everyone. I'll see you next time. 
Rachel Marlene Escalera. Escalera. Escal. Escar. Escalera. Escalera. Escalera? Climbed onto the new McDonald's playground in Delano. Oh my god. Delano. Jesus fuck. Six year old Marlene climbed onto the new McDonald's playground in Delano to. Delano? Holy fuck. Six year old Marlene climbed on the new. Six year old Marlene. Oh my god!